All right. I call this meeting of the Isla Vista Community Services District Policy Committee to order at 6.40 p.m. 6.40 p.m. Call to order. We will begin with a roll call. Uh, Ethan Bertrand. Present. Jay Freeman. Present. And we have one vacant seat. Which is also present. That vacant seat is not present. There are no seats at this table. All right, and uh, oh yeah, check that right here. That's not it. Right here, we have today's agenda. So next is summary of agenda. So we begin the agenda by approving a bunch of minutes, um, and uh, not you will notice, uh, which is entirely my mistake, not approving the minutes of the 2017-05, no, 0602 meeting. <sighs> oh eight. We got the 05 away. We got the oh, you mean we made I got the date wrong. Yeah, maybe it's 0608. I mean, we had a special meeting yeah. whose minutes I, when I started actually getting them, I just yeah, and so. Okay, so we're I, mis I we're missing this. one here. Yeah, but it's just okay. our latest our latest meeting is not. But all of the up until our latest special meeting, we're all good. Okay. Yeah, we've got, and then we were, then we're going to review an updated policy manual. We'll see how well that goes. So when we get to that one. We will consider enacting a sunshine policy. Statement is on the thing. We will consider policies, procedures for hiring district staff and contracting professional assistance. We will consider modifications to conflict of interest policy to avoid expansion past law. We will consider updates to the policy committee work plan. We will talk about future agenda items. And we'll hopefully adjourn the meeting. All right, is there any uh, requests to talk about anything out of order from the public? Okay, is there any general public comment at this time attendees may speak on any other matter within the jurisdiction of this committee? No. Okay, so we'll begin with the approval of the minutes of the 522 meeting. So moved. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> I'm going to approve with the minutes of the May 22nd meeting of the policy committee. Okay, I will second that motion. Uh, public comment. Okay, roll call. We have one more member who walking in who was at the meeting. Okay. <laughs> hey. We're approving our minutes right now, and they look pretty good, but you were at the meetings, uh, so we waited a second for you to walk in. Okay. What is there, is there something to hear like a yes. question about it? Or we didn't see anything, but... Um, well, Jay is the person who put together the minutes, which means that they are just inherently suspect because I'm so bad at this. Okay. So, no public comment from Jonathan is what you're saying? No. Okay, okay. roll call vote. Ethan. Aye. J, I. Motion passes 2 0 at 6 43 p.m. Okay. okay, moving on to approval of the minutes of the May 8th meeting. Okay. I move to approve the minutes of the May 8th meeting of the policy committee. Of policy committee? Okay. Same language as last time, D policy. I'll do it. Okay, all right, into that. okay uh, is there any public comment on the minutes of the May 8th meeting? Here, I'm just looking to make sure we have the date right because you mentioned some question. Oh, just uh, that I said fundamentally question my uh, everything I do? Yes, yes, I definitely question. Um, hey, what type? Um, yeah, it looks yeah. good. I, it's I, a Tuesday. I, yeah. Okay. Any public comment? I think there was none. Did you second? I did not second. I second. Okay. So, <laughs> Ethan, comma J. Still no public comment, but my second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Ethan. Aye. 
J I motion passes to zero at six forty four p.m. Moving on to review updated policy manual. I just don't have an updated policy manual. So what I'm thinking I discovered is that uh, there was a policy that was added by a handout from uh, Spencer. And I realized that in my, as I was organizing all this other stuff, that I failed to include that in any of my piles. Um, and I finally just kind of, I suck at this. And I'm actually going to be agendizing on our next thing that we need to figure out something to do about this. And I'm not certain if we should actually agendize it to policy committee or the board. Um, but uh, these, these, these meeting minutes are, are, are killing me and emotionally draining. Um, but I didn't, I just, I didn't, I, I agendized three and didn't do it. Okay. Um, well, I'm seeing what this language is because we really need to review it. And I'm hoping this could maybe be a work session. Okay. Um, in order to force Jay to actually put together an update to our policy manual so we can all have our policies <laughs> in one easy to find place, we have agendized reviewing the latest draft of the manual. As far as I know, that's the reason why we agendized this was essentially just to kick me in the ass to do it. And I no, still that's not do why. It. It's because okay. I've been really wanting to see this for a long time. <laughs> um, so yeah. I hope that we can review what the latest one was and talk about what we have and see where we need to go. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, And I'm totally like, it's all good like where we're at, but I definitely don't want to waste this opportunity to uh, see if we can make something good out of it. Uh, I can bring up the pages is probably better. So the draft is simply the policies that we had had as of April 24th. The, the skill that I fundamentally lack is essentially word processing, which <laughs> I finally have figured out how to make these agendas and not literally start screaming at my computer. <laughs> but I am I am still failing at even just copying, which is what's one of the things that's causing the minutes to be more complicated is that we keep editing them in Google Docs and then transferring them from Google Docs through into something else. I just can't format them and I fail. Um, and so I... Okay, now is this in chronological order of No, this is in this, this the goal of what I did when I did this was a combination of semantic order. So I for example have um, the board vice board president and vice president, then secretary of the board, then board meetings. Um, I also though uh, had attempted to slightly optimize when it didn't seem to matter for fitting things onto pages, um, which uh, which actually you will notice somehow failed and I didn't notice. Like a okay. D is just, I don't know what I did wrong. Not concerned about yeah, okay. that. Okay, I'm right. just, I was just answering, I was explaining. So what's the most recent policy in this one? Would it be policies approved? It's whatever policy, these, this, I can tell you that this was all the policies that were approved going into the 424 meeting. So it does not include policies that were actually approved at the 424 meeting. Um, and what I'm guessing is that the, so another thing that I realized is I thought there was also going to be that I could just go to the list of policy recommendations, but then I remembered that we don't always approve all the policy recommendations. They get punted back to the policy committee. And so then I was like, okay, what I really need to do is I need to correlate the minutes of the meeting with the policy recommendations and then go through and just layer them on top of here. And so it wasn't like, but I just, I, I, I didn't realize that it was that many steps until today when I thought that I would be able to just layer the, and so then I, and then I just, I was just like, I'm just going to go and 
see how badly they're yelling though. So. <laughs> no one's yelling at you, know. but nonetheless, this is very important. Um, so I think right now, let's figure out. Um, I'm looking at my records to see what the latest thing that's here is. If you find it sooner, let me know. The latest thing that's here. The latest policy in there. Because what I want to do is see what's missing. Oh, what's been updated. I can, I, what I can tell you is, is that, again, that this is the policies that were included as of the April right, right. 24th I'm, meeting. I'm so looking all of the now. April 24th meeting minutes, none of that is included. Right. Yeah. I hear, I hear there's a website that's made about us that oftentimes includes meeting minutes. That is a little true, you said, only a little? No, I'm just joking, it's true. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're Left hand side, third button. Well, yeah, but what I'm actually kind of concerned about is the fact that I, this, this draft was the April 24th policy draft, but there was the April 24th meeting. Well, that's because you there was the general meetings, not committee meetings. So you need to go to the committee. Yeah. Because it was a committee meeting that I gave this draft for, the emergency draft? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Cool. okay. So we got to click on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just a little concerned about this one. Okay, but the, but we but policy committee doesn't approve policy. Wait, what are, you, are you concerned that we're looking at this? No, I'm concerned that the date. So so that it's the 424 draft, and the 420. Yeah, I'm not concerned at all about what we're doing. Okay. I'm concerned about I'm concerned about my recollection of events. All right. So the 424. Oh yeah, I, 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 and I can tell you that it's just useless to look at this meeting because this meeting doesn't actually approve policies. So it's only the general meetings that actually approve policies. So what okay. we need to do is we need to verify. That so we need the minutes of the 424. There wasn't a 424 general meeting. It's that's why so the I, one right before that. I guess actually, I guess I should look at it. Yeah, because that's what happened. I I made a policy manual draft for the 424 meeting, and so this would then must have included all the policies that were approved as of the 420 meeting. Were there any policies approved as of the 420 meeting? Discussing it later. Matter O. Preliminary budget. Yeah, that was not that. Was, I remember that meeting. That was not a policy meeting. Then there was the 418 regular meeting. 418 regular meeting has an agenda. Okay, that's good enough for now. Actually, we can. This is one of those ones that I probably have a packet for. Oh, perfect. Uh, Ten four twenty board packet. Wait, no, it's not the four twenty. It's the four. Four twenty was a special yeah, meeting. Yeah, no, the one we were just looking at here was four eighteen. Four eighteen. We're looking for four eighteen. Oh, wait a second. Jonathan did upload all the attachments for this one. Great. Okay. So we just open this. Okay. So here we we had attended to approve some of these things. What is one of the, like this donations policy was a new one, but we we might not have finished it. Was there anything else that was new? Okay, the donations policy, I believe, is in the well, there secretary committee. Yeah. So the next thing that I would do is I would look at the meeting minutes of the four ten meeting to see whether we actually approved the accepting donations policy. I'm guessing that we didn't at the four ten meeting. I'm hoping that we didn't. What's the reason you're hoping we didn't? Um, don't think because 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 it's not in my 424 draft. Okay. And so if, if we did, then I screwed this up even longer than than, than I would have hoped. Um, but we don't have the meeting minutes uh, for that minute for that meeting on the here. So I might have because sometimes because I'm often the person who prints these damn things. Um, Okay, here are the 418 minutes. Okay. Key reports, funding options, internship program, okay. adopting policies. Motion, adopt the two policies uh, recommended by the policy, Thurlow Brandt. Motion carried 5-0. Okay, so now we go back and we just verify, am I blind? Oh. The draft that was the one that I didn't copy and paste okay. in the draft because I didn't know how to that's format it. While you're spacing, is that was one of the yeah. It was at the time I just didn't want to figure out how to copy. Yeah, so that's. But so it, it, I I'm not. 
this draft does include all of the policies approved then as of including that meeting, it just didn't actually copy and paste them all, okay. but it left it, it specifically stated that it did. So we're good. Okay. okay. Got it. So now we move on to the four, for the 5 2 meeting. Actually, I may as well open up. I don't think the 5 2 special meeting did any policies. It did not. Okay. So, and then there was a the 5 11 special meeting that was just. Fixing stuff, creation, authorizing table, receiving report. Yeah, so that also was not policies. So there was the 5 2 regular meeting, the 5 16 meeting, the 6 6 meeting, and then the town hall also, of course, did not have policies. So, next thing is the 5 2 regular meeting, looking at the meeting minutes of the 5 2 regular meeting. In order to find whether we, which me, which policies we approved, approve recommendations from the policy committee, adopt an amendment to section five decorum, move motion <coughs> to adopt an amendment to section five decorum, rules of order to read as stated in attachment A, and to amend section three to read as in his attachment. A. And that's the only change that we made during that one. Okay, so let's write that down real quick. Well, I'm going to go just going to make the change oh. right now. So then we're going to go here. We're going to go find that. We're going to find attachment A. Hopefully, it's on this website from the uh, wonderful IBCDC. I think we can only make suggestions by how I'm seeing this because we're reviewing it. So I think it's okay if we review uh, what's been prepared and make comments pertaining to it. But we're not allowed to actually modify it with the wording that's provided. I don't think so. Okay. So the next note. So the notes that I can no, that's not notes. This is notes. This one here. So add decorum from attachment A of 5 2. Okay, 5 16 regular meeting. Let's find some minutes. Minutes, minutes, minutes. Here's some minutes. Five sixteen minutes. No, go away. I hate that feature. Okay. Acknowledge events. Consider financial officers. Consider. Wait, I missed something. I feel like I missed. Was something. it? Here we go. Amend the policy rules of order, and to approve the balance of the consent agenda. So let's see what that. Means. Balance of the consent agenda. Okay. So there's some policies right there. All right, so probably, no, okay. It's considered separately. Consider separately. These were considered separately. This was to consider separately. Interesting. Oh, I see. No, it's that this was considered separately, and right, this right. was considered. Okay, I understand. Yeah. All right. Which means that, yes, yeah, so we, 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 we punted on the conflict of interest one on during that meeting, right. and then we only did, okay, so rules of order, attachment A from 516. So now, add rules of order from attachment A of 516. And then we still have the 6 6 regular meeting. I feel like there's no, there must have been something. Okay, so I'm going to go back to these minutes. Cool. And I'll go to the June 6 while you're there. Okay. Maybe, was, maybe Spencer's. Spencer brought a modification that was separate, or maybe that was actually the decorum. No. We don't have six six minutes yet because we haven't had the next meeting. Right. I don't have. I'm looking at. Yeah. No, I'm looking at the agenda. Okay. <laughs> it's still fresh in my mind, so I remember what we didn't take action on. Great. So first we have um, contractor selection and review for professional services.
anti-discrimination. Did we not approve anything from the 661? Because then there's, cause there's just like a giant attachment, which is easy. To, I can just say, I can just tell myself to like go through that oh. attachment and just copy and paste them all in. Sure, you can go copy and paste them. Yeah, but was there anything we didn't approve from that attachment? No, we ended up approving everything. Approved the entire attachment from 66. So there was something though where where where, where we, Spencer brought a modified. Was it? Was I it? I don't think it was a policy. Oh, I remember being a policy. You could be right. I don't know. I mean, it might not have been a. It was just something that it was just a policy that he brought that we didn't do in the committee. It's not necessarily a late attachment. Say that again. I just mean that there was a, a policy that he brought that we didn't do in policy committee. It's not that it necessarily oh. was a late attachment. Maybe it was one of these attachments, like maybe it was the five. So if we look at the five two agenda, open. This word document. Neither of these are marked as. Wait a second. Do we remember the modifying? Oh, I kind of remember it being a modif a slight modification. Maybe to, maybe maybe he just slipstreamed it, like a modification to external representation. Yeah. Does that sound awful here? It's possible. I'm actually seeing an error there. But it's actually, um, I can't bring it up now. Woohoo! It's inappropriate. It, no, it's nothing major. Yeah. Um, I just wish it read differently. Just copy and paste that. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> does our po <laughs> does our policy include these square brackets or not? <laughs> I don't understand. There are square brackets that I copy and pasted into an email that I sent to Spencer that he copy and pasted into an attachment that we all voted on. I mean, that's the least of my worries right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Does anyone from the public remember what I'm talking about? That there was like a policy that Spencer brought just personally as Spencer to the with a modification to the full board? I mean, he's done that a lot, so I'm not yeah. sure uh -oh. which one. I only remember yeah. one. But I mean, honestly, if we're looking at what was approved, that's all that matters. It doesn't. Yeah, but, but was, was it necessarily in the consent agenda? Like, we probably have to look to the whole meeting minutes to verify that it wasn't. Are you talking about like a policy he brought to the board? This is search for policy. Okay. Wait, say it again? You're saying that he brought a policy to the board only? Yes, that it did not come to policy committee. Uh, Um, yeah, I would have guessed beginning of May. Right, I'm not. I decided. I realized I could just search the meeting minutes for policy, and that should be pretty good. And I'm not seeing anything searching the meeting minutes for policy, so I think we're probably fine. Okay. Cool. Okay. So. Um, Let's. You made a list, or I have the list right there. Oh, this is it. Here. So, decorum from five two, um, amended conflict of interest. We need that. Is that not the one from six six? Well, do you have that here? Approve the entire attachment. Oh, entire six. attachment. Oh. Um, here, let's type this real quick. Right. I'm happy to type this. Yeah. Type this. Okay, so we have decorum. Um, next, uh, uh, yep. updated conflict of interest policy. Updated rules of order. Um, attachment A, 516, just for. 
Oh, that one's 516? Oh, that one already had that one. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, update conflict of interest policy is the 661. Yeah. Okay. Um, contractor selection and review for professional services. 66. Six. Yep. Anti discrimination. Board of Directors meeting agenda. Was that the one that Director Brown brought right to the board? Was this the 6 6 one? I wasn't thinking that this was a 6 6 thing. That okay. he, I mean, he might have also done something on 6 6, but I was less concerned about 6 6 because there was. Because uh, I actually I don't think we decided upon that in this me committee. That could happen. But, oh, it's totally fine. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what, which policy. I mean, there's also, I know there was a decorum update from, s oh, wait a second, maybe that was, maybe that was 5-2. No, it was a cor decorum update 6-6 six, six because I had to, yep. yeah. 5-2, uh, I see here. No, there's another decorum update okay. should be in 6-6, six, six, is there not? So both. Um, there was no decorum policy in 6-6? Six, six? Oh, there's no, like, new policy just introduced. Uh, decorum. N 6-6, six, six. no, 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 that was not there. I can't find the meeting when Spencer brought Sent items. And oh, why have I actually been using email recently? Nothing goes well on Jay's email. All right, Adam, Brad Spencer, policy recommendations for 6 6. Uh, anti discrimination, board of directors meeting agenda, board of directors and decisions, enacting clause, conflict of interest attached. External representation. Oh, no, wait, no. It was. Did you say 516 was the one where it was? No, you said 516. For which one? Two, for the, the modified decorum policy. Um, I have 5-2 here. I, know I, have check is that I have instructions to myself. Yeah, 516 is not decorum. Okay, hold on. Notes 522. Notes 508. Is it just the time passes so quickly and I don't realize? What was here we go, here we go. What was the modification from 5-2? There's the chrome effect. Well, what, what was the well, what did we change? Still, I do. Policies five two. Let's just look at this. By by request from the president. No, that's not that's not the final. Um, oh, it's called. Okay, wait a second. It was the request that Natalie made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I I think I know what's going on. Let me go back to the today's. All right. So when what decorum is a subpart of rules of order, and so rules of order from attachment A of five sixteen. I bet that was a decorum. That's what's going on. Got it. Yeah. So I keep saying decorum, and then but there's actually decorum is a subset of rules of order because decorum was explicitly labeled in five two, but it wasn't explicitly sublabeled when I copied it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because the, mod the modification, for the record, that I made right was I uh, I I was supposed to go back and re figure out what the current policy was, and then modify one of the sentences after the meeting, and so I did that. Great. Yeah. Okay, and then from there, enacting clause for ordinances and resolutions. And then amend the policy entitled, well, we already have updated conflict of interest. So from six, should six, be good. Yeah. So you only have five from 6-6? Six, six? Yep. Okay. So, 
I think this is a good things for us to keep in mind for what we uh, need in the updated. Yeah. This is this is this is this is this is, this is helpful because we've now done the we've done part of the painful work that I was not doing. So we haven't we haven't succeeded in formatting it, but we've, we've at least done the meeting digging. So thank you for doing this with me. Oh yeah, well, I think it's important to yeah. get this done. Um, thank you so much. For yeah, that. my pleasure. And then, as far as formatting things, we obviously want to put in a table of contents. Um, I think once we have it all in the right place, what we'll want is a date of adoption and date of amendment. Oh, really? Well, one thing I've seen that's standard is the mm -hmm. date of amendment. Maybe we don't need the... I could see an advantage of that. So that way, if you're like looking through, you could see when the... Yeah, because if, if you like know the policy as of a certain time, it's useful to know when the policies were last changed. Right. Yeah, so I think that could be helpful. Um, I think that's the rest is just, down, down. just basic. But now, as far as as far as next steps on this, uh, are you able to complete it? Um, so we've done we've done most of the the thing that was actually like emotionally blocking me from finishing this. So I mean, I, I will I will be able to have something that looks like crap, but at least have everything in it. Well, it shouldn't look like crap though, because we've been working on this for a long time. And we'll I am just I just. Jay, do you want some help with it? I can yes. Do it and we'll do it together. Yes. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Because I'm also willing to do it, but I know we can't work together outside. Yeah, it's just that we, we, the, 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 the thing we ran into essentially is that our policies are, the policies that are in all the other manuals, when I was looking at it and really confident about doing all this, are typically just a number and a sentence. But we ended up having like our policies have like this like sub outline structure that ends up being like all sorts of indentation levels and all sorts of things. And I just I literally just don't know how to use word processors. So I've been thinking about like I could build like a web page with the information. I know how to do web development, um, but the, but I don't think that's what people really want me to do. So I don't know. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Oh, actually, no. Wait a second. I think we can still, we can talk about that during this agenda item. Can I make a web page, like an HTML file? As the policy, does, like, does it have to look good printed, or can it just look good on a computer and print? If you want to, and this is in terms specifically of the policy manual. The policy for manual, the, for specifically the constructing yeah. the policy manual. Great. Um, I think we need to focus on what it looks like low printed. tech first. Okay. Well, for you, that can be simultaneous. <laughs> no, the only reason, <laughs> the only reason I say that is, is that I is that I am I know how to format the hell out of constructing the the, the web page such that they have all the annotations and outline levels and everything. And I just I just I just literally, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if it, I think it could be great to have a, a awesome online version as well. But okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, um, it'll print. It just, totally. I mean, what you, like the format, the type of thing you have now. Like, we're not trying to do much better than that. Just having everything in there and a table of contents. I think. Yeah, the thing that I have like, now I don't worked, think this for, looks worked like for the crap. initial policies. The thing that I had now worked great for the initial policies. The problem is, is that even when I went to go do the donation policy, the donation policy had all those little, and I just don't know how to do that. Right. Okay. And, and 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 then I run into problems where like as it does page breaks, it does weird things, and I just. I, I do a lot of like typeset layout for like if I was making a magazine, you could assign that to me and it would work great. But the problem is as soon as I go to update the policies, I'm gonna like be really sad that I sit, sat around in InDesign and like carefully laid it all out and like constructed right. the most beautiful book ever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so I just that's why I, I wasn't concerned when something was hanging on to the next page. Okay. Um, especially because we know John, right Jonathan will help me. We'll figure this out. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then so in addition to table of contents, one more thing is I want to figure out a system for like the numbering of it just because I know yeah, like yeah well, that's 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 useful but the problem was for I had been yeah when, when I brought that up initially I thought it, we were going to be doing essentially sub bullet numbering on all the things which also fed into the formatting which is why I was so confident about doing everything before but now we we ended up in this concept where we kind of made 
like we found we have multi-page long atomic policies that contain sub numbering that we I didn't even like this but when it came up we like approved like like I, I remember there was this essentially when we read out the the policy for the motion the numbers became part of the thing we were reading and became something that that people were like no we have to get this right in the reading of it and so now it's in the approving of it and so the sub outline numbering levels are something that at least you I think believe is part of the approval process and I think de facto became part of the approval process so I would also say that and so it, it now is weird to assign numbers to everything because our, our, our policies all have titles like they're all like a top level multi-page long thing and the the numbers were assigned like any numbering was assigned by vote well, let us know what your recommendation is when you actually go in and do it. If it makes more sense to only have it numbered in the sense where just uh, for contents, like if you go to the table, you'll see, oh, policy number three is uh, well, well, board what, president. What I, what I, what I, rather than I doing this? like the 50.7, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. I, what, I, what, I, what I kind of thought we would do is like, for example, we've got this, this, this policy here, rules of order for board meeting, and it's got like 3.1, 3.11, et cetera. Like I would have expected that whatever the number that we assigned to rules of policy, uh, that we assigned to rules of order for board meeting, that would end up being like dot something, which is like whatever the internal number of this is, dot, and so then like all of the, the, the outline numbering from here would simply flow up to the top level of point numbering, okay. and that would actually also affect the, 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 then the formatting becomes like the IVRPD formatting or the IVSY yeah. formatting. Standard format. Yeah, SYCSD, yeah. Um, yeah, when you come back next time, if if you think it'll be better for us to, but I think that right now that, with that okay, so the, but that, that would just require us to, and so is it okay then if I can essentially construct something that would require us to go back to the board to update all policies to change the way that they are approved? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, well, then I can do the formatting. It's not. I still, yeah. You know. So that's that's pretty much my uh, where I'm at with this. Yeah. Um, I didn't have anything else to add, but. We've approved many great policies, and I think the harder part um, is what, what we've done here with drafting them. And I look forward to our next time we get to discuss yeah, I this. Actually, I, actually, I actually enjoy drafting them. I enjoy working on them and okay. approving them. I find it, it is so draining for me to work on meeting minutes, agendas, and, and it's the ways in which the policy manual overlapped with the problem of meeting minutes and agendas and attachments and things that I actually end up to the point where I'm just like I, I get burned out working on anything else like um, but I I, 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 I guess I, I did not sign up to be a director in order to right. do the job of staff <laughs> well I think right now we all have yeah. to step up into that um, yeah. without crossing any line but my other question, you have um, a very talented intern. Um, is your intern helping with the policy manual? When we assigned interns, um, my intern was assigned to work on community engagement. Right. Your intern was assigned to work on policy. And Spencer's intern was assigned to work on formation. So I have purposely not given any policy-related tasks to my intern. OK. And, and I have then, therefore, continued to, because I, I at, at some point, I like work out the hourly amount of time that I spend on this, and I'm like, I should hire somebody to just work for me in order to do this job. It would be more cost effective for me. And then at that point, I start calculating out the number of hours that I would have that person do it, and it just starts to feel really awkward, like a lot of cost end up getting put on me, which I don't like. Um, but Interesting. Um, I think what we should do going forward in terms of just this poll just this item, like I'm speaking within policy manual, obviously yeah. it'll have larger ramifications, but in the future I think the board should look to move some things around so that your intern will be able to help with this because you are the chair. Um, but that'll be something for the board to talk about. Okay. All right. Are we done with this agenda item? Um, because on it. Any public comment on this agenda item? Consider enacting a sunshine policy. So I specifically am interested in discussing this when we get our third member back, just because I think that this is something where we're going to open a conversation and we're not going to finish it immediately, and then we're going to end up restating a bunch of bunch of stuff when we get a third member. And so I figured that we would just not open a complicated conversation until we had our third member back. 
but I agendized it because I was told to agendize this at the last meeting. Not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that that was like so. I, I've added this agenda item here. And this came from the public, right? This 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 one came from the public, but I also wanted it. Cool. But I but like if it had just been me agendizing it, I would have just not even put it on today's agenda and just waited for another t meeting in order to put it on the agenda. But I, because I, I just I think it's. It's starting a new complicated thought process that, and it's just, it'd be kind of cool to not restate it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty glad that it's on the agenda because it um, identifies a point of uh, incongruency between our lines of thought, I think, or maybe just like an assumed one. Uh, you wrote Sunshine Policy, whereas what I was thinking was more of an ordinance. And I think it would be interesting if this was your first ordinance as a district. Um, there are some weird like, implications to having it be a policy rather than an ordinance. It's almost always an ordinance. So. I also I noticed that it's also almost always an ordinance, and then I wrote it as Sunshine Policy because we are a policy committee, um, and that right. we would work on policies. Um, is there what is your thought process for why, when this comes, it should be an ordinance instead of policy? Because it's legally enforceable. Policies can be broken all the time, and it doesn't matter. But this actually would provide the public a protection. Interesting. So apparently I misagendized it anyway. But I'm glad you did, because now next time it might get agendized better. <laughs> I'm not sure that you misagendized it. <laughs> Yo, you disagree. But I, but I do hear what you, with what you're saying on the difference. So you think it should be sent on policy, not such an ordinance? Well, like you said, we are the policy committee. We are the committee. policy committee. Well, I would be interested in seeing how you were chartered. Perhaps just wait until after the next regular meeting. Of us or the board? The board. Okay. Well, since this is going to be something um, with a lot of thought, you're right that we maybe shouldn't sketch this out and get too into it. Um, but I am interested hearing from uh, from the public on why uh, uh, why why the what what dri what's driving this? Because I am very interested in learning more. So if, if you're okay with taking a few minutes just I'm to perfectly okay hear more about it, I'm interested yeah. in your thoughts. And yeah. All right. Um, sure. Okay. So um, I was just I didn't really spend much time on this. I for ten minutes before this meeting looked through San Francisco's uh, That's what I have up now. ordinance. Cool. And what you'll notice is some things are bolded and some things are not. The way that I read it, and this might be incorrect, is that the bolded things are additions to current law. And so their ordinance is actually basically copy-paste of the Brown Act. Um, San Francisco's like, down, down, down. Yeah, yeah, I want, actually wanted to go to Oakland. Gotcha. Um, but I pulled five things from, from it that were, uh, one okay. of them I've mentioned that it's an ordinance. Um, the other four are, uh, they have a time constraint for public comment. I actually prefer a time limit, um, so uh, that they both don't make any sense. Um, they're both the same thing in the way that I've said them. I would prefer a time um, provision, in a sense, so like a minimum time requirement. Um, there's a provision that states that all litigation that occurs within the district must not have any clauses within it during settlement that prohibit the openness of the settlement. Essentially, all settlements should be open to the public and not secret. Um, then there's a special meeting clause in there, which requires special meetings to be noticed 72 hours in advance. There's a closed meeting recording requirement, which I don't believe would be onerous in terms of Transcription, closed captioning, because you don't have to provide it to anyone unless a legal challenge occurs. But they would provide the public with more standing. Uh, not standing, but evidence. Um, and yeah, that's the point. So pretty much enacting policies or an ordinance that uh, includes many of the provisions of the Brown Act and related open meeting laws, but um, calls for uh, greater, um, great, greater measurement and uh, right. That's what a sunshine ordinance is. It uh, it's essentially it takes a public meeting law and it makes it more stronger. Public. Yeah, exactly. To let the sunlight in. Um, 
but yeah, uh, those were the four things that I found. Uh, the ordinance thing, I'm pretty, um, pretty stubborn about, um, just because a policy is not enforceable and it doesn't provide any protection to the public. Uh, for example, if you violate a policy, I mean, I can't really do anything about it. I can go complain at your board. That's pretty much it. I mean, I don't think that I could even sue this, the district for violating one of its policies, personally. But uh, an ordinance is legally enforceable. And um, you're speaking a lot about uh, you don't think that you could sue the district. Just to confirm, this is on here, not related to your personal wishes for any litigation, but for the general public, right? Of which I am a member, yes. Thank you. Uh, is it okay if we keep discussing? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know of any jurisdictions in the county of Santa Barbara that have a sunshine ordinance? It's okay if you don't. I'm just curious if you've come across any. Not sure. That's a pretty easy search to do that. I think the city of Santa Barbara might. I would have expected it to have been on the list from the First Amendment Coalition, but... Yeah, maybe. Santa Barbara County is not one of the counties with a sunshine ordinance. It should be a fairly easy Google search to do. Essentially, news outlets cover this all the time. Then I believe the answer is no. I was just yeah. kind of digging harder. Right. But uh, it's usually a pretty big thing because it affords the public a lot more rights than they're accustomed to. Yeah, and what came up when I looked up City of Santa Barbara Sunshine uh, Ordinance was actually action taken by the council in the mid or actually not the mid-2000s, in 2011, uh, to support legislation um, that would roll back certain aspects of the Brown Act. So I, uh, I'm, I'm not seeing, <laughs> seeing anything indicative of a sunshine ordinance. Um, no, uh, and that was no endorsement of what they did with me bringing that up. Um, all right, well, that was helpful. I don't have any more questions at this time. Uh, Anything from Jonathan? Yeah. There were various times when I was looking into, very, into issues with public meetings and I would find things where there is something that had happened that um, in, for example, um, San Francisco or in Oakland, um, where I was like, yeah, that really, that really did suck. And these people complained about it and were able to actually do something about it. And, and then I would realize, oh, that's because they have that Sunshine Ordinance and not because the Brown Act actually says that. And so it actually kind of for a while muddied my conception of what the open meeting laws actually stated because I had kind of been mixing together stuff that I had seen from the um, places with sunshine ordinances the places that didn't and then I kind of then I had to like go back and just go back to just the the, the Brown Act and the um, the other the, the, the acts that make up the open the open and public meeting acts and um, and, and kind of realize the, the the limited benefits that it actually necessarily provided but um, Question. yeah do you know if like it costs extra money to uh, to make this actually happen? Like, is there a fiscal impact? 
so for most of these things that have been that have been so far brought up, I'm pretty certain that the answer is no. But of course, um, we can always pick and choose. If, for example, there is something which would require an, an extra um, form of storage or noticing that would actually require costing money, then we could just not do that part. But we could always include other parts. The the fiscal impacts that I'd focus on the most is. Um, in legal services. Um, although right now we're very, well, actually I won't get into specifics of that. I think you understand where I'm going. Okay. Cool, um, so just a couple of recommendations of where to take this. I think having a discussion about this after the next regular meeting would be a good idea. And I think that discussion should, I mean, uh, okay, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit now, because it, depending on what you want to do with like ordinance versus policy, you might just have like another policy thing. I would recommend you reach out to your lawyer um, about this specific point and its location within this committee, and see what he says. Oh, yeah. Cool. Because even if you try to draft an ordinance, he would probably need to be involved. So getting him involved early is That's not a good suggestion. That makes sense. All right, I have no, uh, no is further Is that something questions. that, if we're gonna bring something up to our attorney, no, policy committee can ask things of our attorney, right? We don't have to, okay, good. I don't really wanna have to bring this to the full board before we decide on what we wanna do with it or at all, so. All right, is there any other commentary on this? All right, consider policies, procedures for hiring district staff slash contract and professional assistance. So a big thing is, is that we specifically looked into policies for contracting for professional assistance. Um, we did not look into that other half, which we had originally talked about, which was for hiring district staff. Um, we had said that we would and we, as the team, Spencer, Ethan, and Jay, had been looking into that, like, essentially together. We could decide to close the book temporarily, like, until such time as it matters, for hiring district staff. I feel that if we were to just explicitly say, at this time, we are no longer considering policies for hiring district staff, even if at some point in the future we suddenly decide we want to, that will be fine. But because we have this lingering open work between Ethan Spencer and Jay that we were intending to look at, if, for example, next week we continue that, that seems like it would run afoul of the problem that I talked about with our lawyer during the meeting. And so I agendized this so that we could either go ahead and write the rest of that policy, or we could decide to close the book on hiring staff policies at this time. I'm okay with either. I'm like, I'm happy to sit here for hours and work on a policy. I'm happy to just close the book, whatever you want to do. Well, so this is one policy that um, I was very grateful at our last regular meeting to hear from council that uh, there is a draft policy manual available with close to 95% approximately cool. of, of the policies that a special district should probably have. That's different from the um, one that we've been using, the CSDA uh, sample policy manual? Well, this one comes with guidance. Cool. Um, which okay. is really important. Right. Um, so with that in mind, I see hiring district staff as something that we should probably look to see what they have, because okay. it's probably you have, pretty uh, standard. Is that something I can access just online on the internet, that draft? No, no, that's something we need to contact council for. Oh, so we don't have that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so but then, the then, we should, then we should figure out some way of wording what we're about to decide to do such that we can feel like we're no longer work in progress going between the previous meeting and the next meeting. Does that make any sense? Say it again. Like we like we didn't want to have that that like loose ends work in progress between the previous policy team and the new policy right, team. Right. And so maybe there is some way that we could essentially describe what we're doing here that no longer makes this feel like work in progress. Maybe you could just argue and say that I'm incorrectly characterizing as work in progress. But well, I don't think it's a work in progress. Okay, all right. But also, even if we fill the seat, um, someone can always recuse themselves from a dis decision. 
right? From participating in that as well. I guess that is that is true. It would yeah. be uh, so my my place. whole thing here is just because at the last regular meeting, um, council was referencing many employment uh, regulations and laws, okay. um, which I think we need to take into account with this. And uh, this is just one item that I really um, look forward to hearing and receiving um, guidance from okay. council on. So one possibility here is that we had previously talked about a policy and constructed a policy for contract contracting professional assistance. But arguably, um, it was this misinterpretation that I had that we were going to go that deep into hiring. I know that we did talk about hiring, but when but our goal was to hire, was to contract for legal assistance. I don't. Other than saying that we would talk, other than using the word hiring on an agenda, I don't. Did we ever actually have any conversation about the process of hiring? We may have had very briefly, um, probably in the context though of just we need to do this. Yeah. So uh, if it's just in the context of the agenda or the work plan, I would also then say that maybe it isn't work in progress. Right. Got it. So you know where I stand on this. I want to. I want to receive some input some, from the lawyer. Some and I. I Based on, if you're comfortable with what I just said, I am comfortable just saying that this was never really work in progress because we never actually started. I don't working think we have to clarify it. Okay. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm All right. not concerned about that. Okay. Point is there any time. is there any public comment on this agenda item? Seeing none. Moving on to agenda item six. Consider modifications to contract conflict of interest policy to avoid expansion past the law. I have brought an attachment. All right, so uh, as mentioned in my report to the board, no, not during my report to the board, as mentioned during the, um, what's the word for it, the section of the agenda, when the consent agenda at our last regular meeting, um, when uh, Director Thurlow specifically um, requested again that we look into um, expansions of our conflict of interest law that would make it go above and beyond that of what was just scoped in the law, I mentioned that, and this is uh, during that section of our agenda, we did not yet have a district attorney. Uh, I mentioned that my, uh, that my personal attorney um, was looking into that specific question and that if there was any expansion past the law, that I would bring that information back to policy committee uh, such that we could look that over and make potential modifications to our policy. Um, I then, after the meeting, uh, did end up receiving um, a uh, information from my lawyer, which made which uh, d described ways in which our policy could be interpreted to be ex providing restrictions above and beyond that of which is scoped in the law, and in fact telling us that, or telling sorry, not telling us, in fact telling me that the. Um, that no local agency's conflict of interest code may exceed the requirements of the act. That is, in fact, a part of the legal requirement that we are not allowed to add constraints above and beyond. So we that can't have a sunshine type thing in this case. For the case of conflict right. of interest, we cannot have, yes, the moral equivalent of a sunshine clause. So, uh, and that therefore it could be important that we make that modification. Another way of looking at it, though, is, is that we did, we, is that maybe our conflict of interest policy just becomes null and void because we have a clause in our policies which simply states that any of our policies that are against the law, such as one that is expanded past the law, uh, just get ignored and we revert to the law. Um, but I have provided the section, the references um, to the individual law sections and the um, s phrases from our conflict of interest policy, which are problematic. And we can now go through and potentially make some, I think, minor modifications to that conflict of interest policy in order to bring it uh, into compliance um, with, or not compliance, into equivalence with what is scoped in the actual law. Um, does that intro make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I've got open here the financial disclosure policy that we last approved at our last meeting. Some of the definitions and language included in it appear to be ambiguous and, depending on how they are read, could arguably be interpreted to require more disclosure than is required by the Political Reform Act. Specifically, the code's treatment of interests in real property and definition of income could be potentially problematic in that each term could be seen as over-inclusive and under-inclusive, respectively. For example, the Political Reform Act specifically states that, for purposes of disclosure under this article, interest in real property, 
does not include the principal residence of the filer or any other property which the filer utilizes exclusively as the personal residence of the filer. However, Category 1 of the Code requires disclosure of interests in real property that are located within the boundaries of the district. Thus, it could arguably be read to, to include any interest in real property in the district, including a personal residence, which would go beyond the Act's requirements, which is important because no local agency's conflict of interest code may exceed the requirements of the Act. So uh, it seems to me that if we were to simply add the clause for purposes of disclosure under this code, interest in real property does not include the principal residence of the filer or any other property which the filer utilizes exclusively as a personal residence of the filer, we would solve that particular part of the problem. Okay. I'm happy to insert that. Okay. And I'll preface this with um, this is another thing where our district general, attorney, general counsel, will, yes. will be. Uh, very helpful with, but I don't see any use. I mean, any uh, harm with us inserting a, f a few of these. Okay. Um, we could do that as long as we make it clear. Uh, yeah, let's do it. What is being proposed, as in this work session, and what has been adopted by the board? Okay. Uh, so. No, I should be using a good keyboard back because we can shift it. All right. For purposes, oh, I'm lost now. There we go. Which, where in the policy is this? I simply stuck this at the very bottom. And But what section is this here? This is the conflict of interest policy. I know what policy it is, but what is that section on the bottom? Like I added a section, a new one called specification oh, okay. and explanations. So that's not if you part, don't of, like the name that's of, not part of these ones here? Correct. Okay, got it. Um, I thought, because this, this, is this the definition section here? Or uh, is this no, this is just random little subsections like uh, okay. determination of conflict of interest governmental decisions. For the affirmation section, the determination of whether a conflict of interest should be is shoved made through analysis. Now this is like this is not a definition. Direct direct district directors, officers, and employees shall comply with the California government code at SEC. Okay. And you might be, you might come up with better wording for how this starts. Perhaps it should be interest in real property. Make it more specific. Uh, singular, the first one. Okay. So the other part here is that it was listed that. Oh, actually, that's in the next, next paragraph that explains. Similarly, the Act defines reportable income as $500 or more dollars in value or $50 or more in value if the income was a gift. The code separately defines business income but does not define income generally. Business income is limited to mean income from a business entity in excess of $500 annually other than income which is exempt from being reported pursuant to FPPC regulations. Category 2 requires the reporting of income from persons or business entities involved in real property investments um, within the boundaries of the district. Categories 3, 4, and 5 each require reporting of income from any sources when they meet certain requirements of activity within the district. Thus, the requirement to report income from non-business sources could be read as requiring the disclosure of any amount of income, even $1. Additionally, the code's definition of business income differs from the Act's definition of income in that it applies to income in excess of, but not including, 
$500, whereas the Act defines income inclusively as $500 or more. Section 87302 of the Act requires that reportable interests in a local agency's conflict of interest code be the same as those required by 87206, disclosure of investment or interest in real property, and 87207, disclosure of income. Accordingly, it is important that the code's definitions match those found in sections 87206 and 87207, not only to ensure compliance of the Act, but also to reduce ambiguity. Um, so looking at some of these... Uh, here we have business income means income from a business entity in excess of five hundred dollars. It would actually we should change that to state um, from a business entity of five hundred dollars or more annually. Perfect. Okay. Uh, another modification that we can make for this is. Okay, so um, $500 or more in value, $50 or more in income was a gift. We should, we should define the word income. So income means, uh, we should actually, I'm going to pull up government code 87207A1. Oh, I see. Okay. Source of income aggregating. Yeah, whether the aggregate value of income is. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I see, I see why it was worded that way. All right. So. Um, income means income from any source. Um, uh, Should we just take out the income means part? Well, we've got is this we've got, we're like in this definition section for purposes of listing the categories of disclosure. Actually, that's a good point. We do have a we do have a definitions area, so we can just move this interest in real property into the definition section. Okay. okay. What I want to do is essentially state like a limitation on an existing definition. So it's like interest in real property as used in this document is any interest in real property but does not include. I think that exists higher up. Uh, now lower. For the purposes of the following terms. Shall have the meaning set forth. Yeah. The issue then is that I have to kind of like redefine from scratch income and interest in real property as opposed to saying that. We could we could do the thing that, that I think might be reasonable and that I think that uh, George might have been arguing for, which we could say that income will have the definition as, uh, as laid out in uh, Section 87207 of the California Government Code. Do you think that satisfies our requirement? I believe that satisfies our requirement because we were actually allowed to generally refer to anything, but if you don't think it does, we'll both. We'll no, I'm okay with doing it, but then I think we have to make that uniform throughout the policy, like okay. for other things. That'll probably take us more, because yeah. we, we might not even know where to find all the things, so yeah. So, I mean, I think um, really what we need to do here is just synthesize the the two main areas of, of concern in this opinion that you received, which... Meanings uh, and modifications set forth herein. So now we can, now we can change this. I'm going to add some brackets there to say that um, um, income uh, only includes income from any source, only is limited, income as used is limited to income from any source that is $500 or more in value or $50 or more in value if the income was a gift, a general description of the business activity, if any, from any source. Interest in real property as used does not include the principal residence of the filer or any of the property. Does that read okay to you? 
Yeah, that All does. Right. So those two changes satisfy the income comp issue and satisfy the interest in real property issue and we've already satisfied the business income issue by adding $500 or more or changing $500 or more is probably correct. Wait, instead of any modifications. Okay. So I, I I think that these four mod these four modifications satisfy all of the complaints that are in the letter that I provided. Cool. Um, so I think what our next step here and good job with this is we have the existing policy that we approved at the board level. Yeah. We have this Re well, before we have this, we have this opinion that you've received. Correct. And, or your interpretation of it, right? Because you Correct. wrote this. Um, and then we have this new recommended amended policy. Correct. I think what we do from here is forward the three All of, of this these. to our district lawyer? Yes. All right. That, that um, makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. And how, uh, how do we want to do it? Do we want you to do it since you have this document? I can easily do that. I will not be. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so, and perhaps you can make the parts that we change stand out, like whether it's. Just oh, what I was going to do is I was going to just provide. I was going to provide the copy of our current thing, the full. Okay. I was going to provide this letter, and then I was going to provide just these, because we actually we, we didn't change anything outside of this one little tiny area here, and so that way and so that way it's very and I can even it's very clear. Cool. What's been modified. And it's also I wouldn't be surprised if um, if council provides us with a simpler one uh, in this no. magical reference to recommended policy manual, in which case I'd be interested in giving that a look. That makes um, a lot but, of sense. But to great me. great work with this and. Thanks for uh, being willing to, to take the lead with inquiring. Oh, absolutely. And I think with everything, we have to make sure everything we send over there is just really to the point because um, uh, we have a lot of inquiries to send that way. But Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Is there any public comment on our agenda item? No. On our agenda item six? Okay, is there any other comments people would like to make on agenda item six? Seeing none, moving on to agenda item seven, consider updates to policy committee work plan. Policy committee work plan. Can you just zoom out a little bit so oh, we can sorry, see that? That makes more sense. Uh, no problem. One thing that I'm realizing I don't have written down in uh, when we were discussing earlier what to add to the um, to the updated policy manual is this section seven. This committee did come up with recommendations on just that, right? Method of action and quorum. only recently that the board as a whole uh, discovered that it was required to have a majority of the board present in order to take action. 
Ethan knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, I think most of us knew it. But oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, no, we're, to take action. The thing that I did not know was that we did is that if if you have, which also by the way might explain some of my complaints at previous meetings, that if you have five of seven people at a meeting and three of them vote yes on something, that that is not sufficient to for carry it through. I did not know that until very recently in the grand right. scheme of things. Which is why I assume that it's not. But I know that we've discussed this. Yeah, I know we discussed. We well, we dis I don't like think we depth. actually. I know we we, we went, had a long discussion of yeah. it, but I don't think that we. Did we? I don't know. Just do anything. I mean, oh, it's this one right here. So, okay, enacting clause called board actions and decisions. Oh, board actions. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So is that not in our? That was not in our list did, of things. Did that it make earlier. it to the board? It's possible that I just left that out when I was looking. I want to go here. Five sixteen. No, because it was five twenty two, so it'd have to be six six. Oh, never mind. That was there. Sorry it didn't make it onto my short list when I was reading it before. All right. So it's all adopted. I just didn't have it written down here. Okay. So, so then I should go back to here and then add board action and decisions. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, we were looking at the... Sorry for that diversion. Not at all. So that, I mean, it looks like since the last time we've looked at this, we've made considerable amount of progress with, with adding things because looking at this we uh, were in deep progress with section 9 um, section 8 is most of that covered in our policies this time was it a subcommittee is this is a committee of a committee well I know we didn't I don't, I don't know that part standing in ad hoc do we have that in in policy right now? We have the agenda requirements for them in policy, but I don't remember us having any other information about them in policy. Do you have a policy? Committees of the board of directors. Oh, committees, yeah. We were talking about standing. Oh, I see. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Just checking off things on our, on our list here. Uh, so most we have most of that done in Section 8. Section 7, we have uh, the method of action. We have the quorum. We have an acting clause. Um, so we still need, I think, something that formalizes recording of the vote in the next in the executing ordinance but most of that section 7 done and now if we go up it looks like the next one rules of order I think we're like pretty settled on that for a while um, minutes storage and distribution I think we still need to work on that um, our agenda policy is pretty strong right now that was a big um, big improvement that we had. Uh, meetings, we have a regular meeting of the board policy. Um, and then section two, that's something that we need to open up some more. Uh, I remember at our last meeting we briefly discussed um, the role 
of the president versus the role of the secretary in um, setting the agenda. And that's still something I'd like to explore. Uh, purpose, I think we have. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with where we're at right now, uh, just looking at this list. Um, and this is helpful for future agenda items. Okay. But was there anything that you wanted to bring up in this that? No. No, okay. Um, actually, wait a second, no, there was, um, which was that we do not have anything about hiring um, this. Now, is the goal of the work plan to only serve as things that we want to do in the future, in which case should we be crossing things off and we're done with them? Or is the goal of the work plan to also be a outline of everything that's done? Um, well, I think one thing that we discussed when we made this was that this is specifically for the board of directors. Oh, I keep every every time this agenda item comes up, I make the same mistake. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but there's some yeah. things that are very close associated with it because if it's employment or hiring of a general manager, that's the employee. We got a whole section on committees. Yeah, <laughs> that's the executive officer of um, so. of the board. Um, but yeah, this is helpful to see. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, do you have any comments on the work plan? Um, I don't. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. You've never seen I the work plan. On it. Are you? Are you? It, it's kind of that long. You can just like sit in that chair. You can see it over here. Maybe I haven't seen it in a while. Actually. Okay. That'd be a better way to see it. <laughs> All right. So we've got. It's two pages. It's one and a, one and a half pages. So when you're done with this, oh. this is all. Aren't these all done, right? Basically. Most most of it is yeah. done, yeah. Okay, what's the next page? Looks good. Um, can't think of anything else right now. I mean, besides the employee stuff or contractor stuff, but you enjoy doing that. Yeah. All right. The next agenda item is future agenda items. Yeah. So um, the first idea I have is a timely one, uh, and that is policies for the use of council. Um, and that's something I was going through um, IBRPD um, policy manual the other day, and it specifies um, how um, how council is. Uh, is used like the proper channel to communicate with council. So looking for something like that, uh, and SEL. S P on council. Oh, touche. <laughs> okay. And real quick, I'm gonna come up with a better title for that. I'm gonna go look. But Consider recommendations for a legal policy. Um, and then what you have there 
that's a good uh, starting point. If I think of more things that I want included in particular to what we want to discuss, I'll send that to you. Okay. I'm not touching on the merits of any of it. Um, and that one. Oh. <laughs> um, and then consider uh, council's recommendation on um, conflict of interest policy. Um, yes, review draft policy <laughs> as the first agenda item. Um, maybe we'll even have so much to review that it'll be the majority of me. Uh, I wouldn't mind it. And um, create recommendations to amend the um, policies regarding board president and vice president and secretary. Um, in relation to um, the creation of agendas. And let's have it um, creation and distribution of agendas just to be fair. And um, if you go and just see uh, if that's the proper way to put it. Policies for board president, vice president, and secretary. I think it's pretty clear. But if you see anything in what the actual policy titles are that you want to change in there, go oh, for it. I understand. Uh, but I think that's fine. Uh, that's what I have right now. Jonathan? Yeah, I'm going to just take a picture of that. for that section. Okay. That moves us on to agenda item eight, which is adjournment. Uh, I move to adjourn. Okay, Ethan seconded by Jay. I second. And <laughs> Moving on to a vote. Oh, no. Jonathan? Sure? Yes. It's like your last chance to say anything. Say forever. anything. Ever. I'll give it up. You got to make us work harder. Okay. <laughs> you guys aren't done yet. Roll call vote, Ethan. Aye. J. I. Motion passes 2 0 at 8 08 p.m. I call this meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>